There's a lot of different moving parts that make up a field service implementation. That can range from how the work orders are generated inside the application to physically going out and dispatching that information and also understanding what products and or services might be on those those work orders so when the technician is out in the field the technician has the information available so the first thing that's important to understand is where are those work orders coming from so let's just take a little bit at the process itself so when a work order is first created whether it's manually through the application or using some of the automated scheduling situations through the service agreements they still need to be scheduled and dispatched inside the application so as part of Dynamics 365 customer cases and concerns can really originate from any channel inside the application, whether that's coming from an email or even really just social media, depending upon what the situation is. The other thing that's nice with the new version of Dynamics 365 is we even have the ability now to create work orders directly from IoT-enabled devices. So let's say you have an item where uh, you have a, a heater or something like that that is pinging back to the to the internet. We have the capabilities to detect anomalies and work on that information from there. And it really helps us to not only forecast the information that we're looking at, but ensure that the information that's on that work order is accurate and we can build that information as we're moving forward. Now, once the work order has been created through whatever situation it is, the next piece is to really start to schedule the work order inside the application. And scheduling is really important because usually an agent has made some type of service promise to the customer. So making sure that we have the right schedule is imperative to keeping that promise. There's a lot of different tools and availability options to provide flexibility on how as an organization you're going to choose to schedule your resources, whether that's using the manual schedule board or even maybe through smart scheduling by being able to identify the right person at the right time. And we even have the capabilities once we get out there we can actually optimize schedules. So if we know that from an organization standpoint, we're really concerned with making sure that we're preserving fuel economy or we're really concerned with trying to make sure that it's the right technician for the right call based upon skill sets, we have the capabilities to define how we want to optimize the schedules to make sure that people are the right person at the right time and working that information across and even can provide different things like driving directions or color code maps to make sure that we truly know who the technician is that's working with it. Now once that information is out there and we actually have created that information, it's also important to understand what inventory is associated with that work order. And so by being able to go out and do things like write-off reduction where we can accurately track what information is on a work order, we can ensure that our inventory is up to the minute based upon things that are actually taking place on the mobile application inside the field. We also have the capabilities by exposing some of those entities on Inside the application for the technicians to be able to see what is currently in inventory, what information has been allocated to specific jobs, and then leverage some of that information to be able to make sure that we're delivering what it is that we need and manage the parts that are going to be necessary based upon those individual situations inside the application. When you talk about field service, it's not always just about work order management. A lot of times you'll hear the term mobile workforce management. It's really about making sure that we know who the person are, is that needs to be scheduled for a specific work order at a specific time. And by utilizing the field service mobile application, we now have the capability to keep the customer informed at all stages of the service delivery. They have the capabilities uh, to leverage things like external APIs, whether that's Twilio to be able to send automated text messages, or even just email reminders to their customer to ensure that when that technician is on their way, the customer is notified at every step of the process to make sure that they have all of the information they need to be prepared for when the technician arrives. Once that technician is on site, now the technician will have all of the tools that they need inside that mobile application, whether that's a complete history of what's been done for this customer in the past, or whether that's even just service preferences as to what they should keep in mind once they actually get on, job, on site so they can work through some of that information. But all of that data that is collected over time helps to paint 
paint a picture on how long each one of those appointments should actually take. And the mobile application now gives us the capabilities to empower our technicians to follow those step-by-step -step instructions and take pictures and really ensure that that work order is being completed in a timely manner. Another key part of just doing business today is understanding that business is changing. Uh, five years ago, we didn't have things like the Internet of Things where we had all these TVs and things that were connected to the Internet. Now we can actually leverage that information and harness that power to be able to really start to create more of a proactive service organization inside our application. With things like anomaly detection, we can monitor remote devices, and if something occurs that is out of the ordinary, we can now detect and troubleshoot that information directly from within inside the field service application. If we really decide that we don't have the capabilities to solve that problem remotely, we now have the capabilities to dispatch the right technician at the right time, but they will have a complete history of what has happened based upon that IoT anomaly so we can better prepare the technician for what happens when they arrive on site. And we can use those algorithms and those things that we found over time to really start to predict when things may fail so we have more of a proactive situation so we can replace that information when needed instead of actually having to trigger a service call and then work with the information and potentially have a customer be down for an extended period of time. And using those same situations, we also have the capabilities to do work order creation where we can look at a specific type of anomaly and based upon past experiences, we might just go out and create a work order right off the bat and just cut out the middleman and just dispatch somebody straight from that situation. But it's all about being able to provide a customer-centric experience, to understand everything that is important to that customer through a 360 degree view. We can keep track of all the activities, both upcoming past and previous appointments, as well as anything that might be self-scheduled from a customer, maybe if they're using the portal. We have the ability to see all outbound communications, and as I mentioned earlier, those outbound communications could be via email, those outbound communications might be via text message, but it's about leveraging the technologies that are important today to be able to review that information and close that information out as quickly as possible, and make sure that the technicians understand what is expected of them when they go out and they're actually performing that information on site for the customer.